All right, in this lecture, we're going to learn about C types. C types is part of the standard Python uh, library, so you don't need to install anything extra here. Um, it, it's part of every Python distribution since about Python 2.3 or uh, maybe maybe 2.6. I'm not sure, but it's, it's certainly there in 2.6, 2.7, in the Python distributions you'll be using. Anyway, uh, what C types allows you to do is to call into um, libraries that uh, may be written in C or, or uh, C++ or, or Fortran uh, and call those functions from within Python. So basically it's an easy way to generate uh, wrappers for these existing libraries and you can use this to speed up your code. So if you have, a, uh, if you have some you know, part of your Python code that's slow, you may consider writing it out uh, in C programming language and then creating a shared library and you can use C types to call into it. There's other ways to do it too uh, that we'll be talking about, but uh, C types is, is quite easy. Um, again, it's most useful when you already have a library, so you may, you know, if you, you may have a set of shared libraries, some other code that was written that you want to utilize, uh, and you want to do it from within Python. And th this is where it's most useful because it's really easy. Um, it has a very complex view of, of data, so Basically, any type of data that you can represent in C, um, you can you can use uh, you know you can represent it using C types. And so, in my opinion, the best way to learn C types is just to look at some examples. So, um, here's an example where uh, we have some C code that create uh, calculates a, a Fibonacci number. So. Uh, this is just the uh, prototype. Uh, this is the actual function that calculates, a pro uh, takes in an integer and returns a fib the Fibonacci number. And uh, so if you were to compile this code as a shared library, then you could, you could call it from a Python script like this. So um, here basically we're, we're uh, creating a Python library, uh, or I'm sorry, a, a Python script that imports C types. Uh, calls the shared object file, uh, this uh, C DLL. So, you know, on Windows machine, uh, shared objects or shared libraries have a DLL extension, dynamic link library. Um, so that that's where the, the syntax comes from there. But uh, anyway, so we'll, we'll call into it. Um, uh, then it's associated with this variable, which I call libfib. So then uh, if we define a function, which is C C types underscore fib a in Python that then returns um, uh, it, it makes a call to libfib dot fib uh, again that's referring back to the C++ name uh, and then we initialize it we, we convert the string the a string we tell um, C types what a is in this case it's an int uh, as it has to be because of the C script up here so um, anyway, once we have this uh, little wrapper, then we can uh, use it in an in interactive Python prompt. So we'll, we'll import all of the uh, functions in fib, and then we'll just call in uh, C types fib. So let, let's go look at an example in the terminal. I've already got, uh, got these files here. So if you take a look, um, fib.c is, is basically exactly what's in the file there. Okay, we're going to compile that as a shared library, but let's also go ahead and take a look at fib.py. And so in, in, in this um, script, I have two functions. I have one that's just uh, defined as pure Python code, so that we're not going to call into the C code at all. This is a, a Python implementation of the Fibonacci number calculation. And then down below, we're going to uh, initialize the, uh, the library. Uh, and then here's the, that same function, C types fib. So we're going to, you know, I defined both of them so that we can do some comparisons. Okay, so we'll start off by uh, compiling uh, the shared object file. I don't really expect you to know how to do this because, you know, it, it's basically compiling C code by hand here. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show you how I, how I do it. So um, I'm going to use GCC compiler with a couple of options. Uh, I want to compile only uh, 
the C file. So if you look, that created that object file, fib.o, which we can then uh, convert to a shared object uh, like this. And so now we have the, the uh, fib shared object. Actually, I want to use it. I want to remove that and, and uh, do it again. I'm going to use a, a convention that uh, is used in Python extension models and uh, modules, and that the uh, shared library is led with an underscore. Uh, so the the, the uh, shared. I'm just going to rename it with an with an underscore in front of it there. So anyway. Um, now we should be able to run Python. I'm going to run IPython so that we can use its time at module. Uh, but we will be able to say uh, from fib import everything. And now we should be able to call into those functions. So uh, we can do it in the pure Python. Uh, if we say fib 10, uh, we can also call the C types version. So if we I think we called it C types fib 10. Okay, and good thing there, we get, we get the same answer. Okay, but uh, Fibonacci numbers get, uh, you know, slower as, we get, as they get bigger. So let's, uh, let's run it with uh, the number 35. You can see that the C-types implementation returns it, it rather rapidly. But if I were to run the Python version, uh, we're going to sit here a while while it computes. So you can see it, it visually it took longer. We can also use the IPython time it module to see exactly how much longer. So if we use the time it module to time uh, fib using, uh, using the input 35, give it a few more seconds here. So the time it module runs a a series of loops uh, and takes the best of three and it decides how many to run and if it takes too long uh, to run one then it, it'll only run one. So there there you can see it took 3.65 seconds to calculate that uh, in one loop. Now let's see how fast the C-types version is. So there it ran 10 loops and, it, and the best of the three of the ten was an average of 42.7 milliseconds per loop. So is much, much faster, as you can see. So we can also, as a second example, we'll show you that uh, we're going to pass in uh, a NumPy array. And so in this case, uh, this is a pretty simple, uh, you know, a summation function. So we're going to, we want to take, we have a, a a list of floats, du uh, doubles actually, d double precision numbers, floating point numbers in this case, and we want to find out what the total summation is. And so this is the C function that we would uh, use to compile that. Uh, and again, we want to compile it as a, as a shared object. Uh, this would be an example of the Python script. Uh, there's a small error here in that this was used actually on my Mac. On Macs, the, um, the file extension is not uh, not SO; it's dynamic D D Y L I B. So on a on a Unix machine, this would be dot. I mean, I'm sorry. On a Linux machine, this would be dot SO. Uh, so other than that, though, it, it's fine. So we're going to call that library and and then call it in. Now, when you have an array, it, things are handled a little bit differently. Uh, and we need to tell C types that we just want to we want as a we want to pass in a pointer to the address in memory of the array. So that's basically what this command here does. So we have an array that we're passing into a function, and then we want to tell C types that this is data as uh, a void pointer. So this just points to the address in memory of the first location of the array. Uh, it's not really a that important that you know, you may not even know what pointers are if you don't have any experiment, experience in C, uh, but just know that this is how you would handle NumPy arrays um, with, within C types. Uh, also, this should be a total dot pi, not 
fib. So this was just a mistake copied from the previous slide. So then anyway, you can you can uh, use it with with this command. So let's let's play with this a little bit. Just to want to sh show you something. Uh, so again, we have the file total dot c, uh, which calculates the sum of an array. Okay, so we need to compile that. Uh, So that created the uh, object file, and we want to create a shared library out of it. And we want the name to be underscore total dot so. So there's the shared. Oh, let's uh, rename that correctly. So. There's a correct shared library, and then let's go ahead and look at the Python script that is a wrapper. Now, in here, I've actually have three implementations. I have a pure Python implementation of a total function. Uh, I have a NumPy implementation, which is just uh, basically a one-liner, the, the sum, MP sum. Uh, and then I have the C types implementation, which is going to call our C file. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and run IPython again and say from total import everything, all right? And let's start off with the pure Python implementation. So we'll uh, start with the pure Python implementation here. Uh, we need to define uh, an array X that is, we want it to be floating point numbers, so we're going to say for i in range 100. So we're going. This is going to give us a. Sorry. So that there we have. You can see what they are. It's just the numbers one to 100, and we want to take the total of that. So we're going to say uh, total Python. There we get. Total. Okay, so we can go ahead and use the time it module to see what, how well we did. Or how fast, how long it takes. So 12.4 microseconds per loop. Okay, so now let's let's try our, uh, our uh, C types implementation. So the C types implementation actually needs to know how long the, the loop is. So if I say n equals 100 and then uh, say import numpy as mp and then x equals M mp array a range n where the data type is equal to a double typo all right so there's our uh, NumPy array from numbers 0 to 100. And so now we can use the, the C types summation, uh, C types, I'm sorry, uh, total C types, x, n. And then we get the answer. Let's use the time it function. Thirteen point five microseconds per loop, so it's actually slower than the pure Python. The reason for this is that there's overhead calling into a library, and so you know I, I purposely did this to basically show you an example of where it's not always uh, better to just write your code in C and use C types to call it because there is overhead associated with making the call into the library. So you need to ensure that whatever you're doing is actually computationally expensive. And in this case, uh, just adding up uh, floating numbers in a list is not that compli you know is not computationally expensive enough to show any gains here. Whereas, you know, when we looked at the Fibonacci sequence earlier, Fibonacci numbers rather, it, it was. Um, so this is a good example of why you, you shouldn't just blindly you know pre-optimize your code by converting to C or whatever. You really need to understand where your code is slow um, by using you know, these time functions or other 
you know, I'll teach you guys very soon about how to profile your Python code. Um, but anyway, just finally, let's just go ahead and see how fast we could do this in pure NumPy. So if we just use the NumPy sum uh, x and time it, uh, you can see that it's uh, four microseconds per loop. So it's much faster to just use the pure NumPy implementation. And this is because uh, the way that the NumPy implementation is written, uh, it, it doesn't have to call into uh, a dynamic library using C types, and so therefore uh, it's actually quite a bit faster. It's a more efficient implementation. So anyway, uh, the lesson here is that make sure that what you want to write in C or use C to do uh, needs to actually be a computationally expensive task. Otherwise, you're not going to get any performance gain from doing it. The overhead will, will eat you up.